Welcome back, everybody, to the St. Louis Cardinals franchise. It is Season 3. We're about halfway through the season and are in first place by two games. We've been playing some pretty good baseball lately, and players who were struggling early in the year are turning things around. We start today, now top five in runs scored, tied with the Houston Astros. We're also top five in home runs, and our team ERA is now at 12. We have about a month to go until the MLB draft. Let's start to get closer to that as we wrap up action against the Twins and win 7-3. Lars Newtbar was banged up for a couple days, but he's now healthy enough to return. Every team in the Central right now is still very much in the running to win the division this year. The Brewers are the only team right now under 500. We're taking on the Cubs now on the road, our first meetings this season. An 11-2 win for the Cardinals gets us off to a very strong start. Newtbar, Walker, Contreras, Edmund, and Lane Thomas all go yard. In scouting, Rolando Calderon. He's now jumped up to 10 on our board, 22 on the MLB. Probably going to do another week of scouting. He looks like a really good first-round option, even if he has that weakness with walks. And then Chad Prince at center field, just kind of a depth player that we're targeting here at 108 on the board, but with that potential range of 61 to 76. I don't know. Looks like he'll start off with really good contact. And some decent skills right off the bat, though. So we have a lot of pitching information now. I'm not sure if I should try to get that last 5% on a lot of these players. Some have 100, some have 95. I kind of want to give us one more shot at discovering some catchers. We scouted a couple last episode, but let's see if we can have our best scout maybe give us... Another option, I like to address catcher this year, and I want more than two choices that I like. And then I'd also like to scout Edgar Mateo. Now, he is ranked in a spot where we don't have a pick, so I've not been looking too much into these guys ranked like 40, 50, 60, but he has a really good potential range, high ceiling, so I want to see if there's a chance that he could go up our board at least. Wrapping up against the Cubs, our first series against them is a win. And now we've got the Reds, and these have been the two teams now fighting atop this division for most of the season. First game goes to St. Louis, a 7-1 victory. As Donovan and Arenado go yard, and Sonny Gray has a solid game against one of his former teams. Cardinals take care of business in Cincinnati with a sweep, increasing our lead further in the NL Central. And Tink Hens continues to put out these good starts. Let's go into his numbers here a little bit. He just earned his ninth victory of the season. He has 75 strikeouts and 83 innings, so the K rate's getting better. That's reflected in his development this season. Home runs are under control as are walks. He's just pitching very well. And that puts him top three for Rookie of the Year voting right now. We dropped the first two against Toronto at home. Not a good start to the little homestand, but let's get back to scouting. Rolando Calderon, he's up to fourth on our board now, so he's going to replace Leslie Fisher at that four spot. Calderon, 87 to 97 potential. I don't think he'll be there when we pick, but we have options now. And then Edgar Mateo, he is tumbling down the board, so we will stop scouting there. And I don't know that we scouted any new catchers, so Discovery just hasn't been all that good this year for us, for whatever reason. Next up, we're going to try to get a couple relievers on the board now, and this is Ken Strawberry, who is 20 years old, and I really wanted to find a reliever who has a little college experience. That's one of those spots where I'm less interested in developing like an 18-year-old high upside prospect. I'd kind of like someone who has a faster path to the bigs. I'm just looking for relievers that can play, and I don't want to wait forever. We're going to scout Emerson Parker as well. He lands in that zone where we don't have a selection, but he should have very good like day one power, speed, some defensive ability, and he's 21 years old, so someone else I'd like to get some information on. I'm having a little bit of trouble finding more individual players I'd like to scout, so we're going to try some 
discovery here as well with infielders. The Cardinals are up now three and a half games in the Central, six and four over our last 10 and 45 and 32. So rough series here against the Blue Jays. We salvage it though at the end. The Texas League season is now half done. So here are numbers for the AAA team. Very impressed with Joe Adele and Will Brennan in the outfield. And then Thomas Sujezi has had a good a first half as we could have hoped. But his ratings against lefties are taking a hit. What's most impressive down there is the pitching. We have more pitching than we have spots to put these guys right now. Takoa Roby has arguably been the best starter down there, and there are a lot of good ones. Roby is somebody I'd even consider giving bullpen innings to because at age 24, he's starting to get to that point where I would like to get him big league experience. And if he's pitching this well, then I'd be interested in him getting a role at the majors. But it seems our bullpen is trending in the right direction. We brought in Anthony Bender. Jojo Romero has gotten his numbers kind of more on track as I expected. The advanced numbers were kind of saying he was pitching well, and now that's kind of reflected by the surface numbers as well. The one guy, though, has shown some inconsistency is closer Ryan Helsley. He has that elevated 5.2 ERA. He's given up five home runs. And he has 21 saves to four blown. Hard to have too much success as a closer when you're giving up home runs. We get the Reds again after our sweep in Cincinnati. Game one goes to the Reds. Final score, four to three. Nestor Cortez goes five, giving up all four runs. Not much offense until late for us. Tim Kent's on the mound against Andrew Abbott. That's a good matchup. We're going to play this one, and here is Victor Scott, who has a cold streak going right now. His batting average has fallen to 259 with a 323 on base. Okay, Brendan Donovan's really struggling against lefties right now. Maybe that's a good time for us to play somebody else there. So Mason Wynn is going to move to second. Tommy Edmond. He is turning his season around, thankfully, and he'll be at short. He was struggling for a long time, but look at Tommy supplying the power this year. A 440 slugging would be almost a career high for him. And he sat out the last couple games that I've played, but I really want to talk about someone who is surprising me this season as we get into Cardinals and Reds. So we're a few games ahead of them right now. Reds 43 and 35. For much of this series, they've been more toward the bottom of the standings. So things are shifting this year. And here's Tank Hentz making his 16th start. See if we can get him win number 10 and closer to a potential rookie of the year season. TJ Friedel leads things off for the Reds. 96 and a fastball, strike one. Good curveball on the bottom edge. And a weak ground ball. Tommy Edmond makes the play. I guess I have Edmond at second and Mason Wynn at short. Wouldn't mind seeing Wynn there play some short. Tyler Wade is the batter, 313. 98 there from Tink Hens. That's got to be the fastest one I've seen from him. Just under with the curveball. And just off. What an at bat here for Tyler Wade. This is a tough set of pitches to face. And he's still in this one. 3 2 and fouls that off. Finally, strike three. Spencer Steer. Reds got him courtesy of a trade the Twins probably should not have made for Tyler Malley. Three and one from Tink Hentz. Leaves it up and in to Steer, who looks at strike two. And a bouncer. Edmund tracks it down and finishes the top half.
Andrew Abbott is on the mound today with a 348 ERA and only allowing a 106 whip. Not a heavy strikeout guy, but tough to make good contact against him. Here's Victor Scott. We'll have to reevaluate some of the versus lefty numbers, see if things have changed. But Scott down to 259. And last I checked, he still led the lead in stolen bases. All right, that was kind of nasty, though. Strike three and thrown away. Scott, just stay there. You can steal it next pitch. Do we go on the first one? Is that too obvious? We do not go. I don't see him throwing out 1-0. He does not. It's still basically a pitch out. And there at second is Scott. Give him 26 stolen bases on the season. It's just too easy. Count on Tommy is 3-1. and one. About the only thing that can't advance him is that. The lineup's a bit shaken up today, and I wanted to make sure we got a chance to play and talk about Nolan Arenado today. This guy is defying... The expectations hitting 284 with 17 homers that leads the team. Nolan still has it here at age 34. Regression can wait. This guy still got some all-star caliber baseball to play. And he's really bouncing back from last year with the injuries. And now we already see him close to matching extra base hits, homers, RBIs, and in 42 less games. He's been super productive. And Nolan bounces this one to third base. Scott has to stay at second. Victor Scott at second base. He's running. And he is out at third base. Got aggressive that time. Does not pay off. I'm not that experienced here trying to steal third base. That's going to the gap. Jonathan India has extra bases. A 2-0 slider is belted to right center for a leadoff double. They were able to keep Scott at second. We'll see if we can keep India from scoring. Cedric Mullins is a red this year, but numbers aren't great. Grounder will hold the runner one down. Fly ball left center. India could look to run on that as Scott makes the catch. It's a bluff. And I threw it to the wrong base anyway. In on the hands to get ahead in the count. I'm noticing Hens having a lot of trouble putting guys away here. That's like the next step for him is to get more consistent swing and miss stuff. He's throwing really well. The command is there, but they're getting a piece of everything. Doesn't miss the bat. It's a base hit to right, and India's coming home. Lars nails him at the plate. Both teams create a scoring chance. Neither end up cashing in. Really happy with the recent play of Jordan Walker with a 264 average and now 10 homers. Andrew Abbott gets a fastball to graze the bottom edge. Last year, Walker had 23 home runs, so he's still on pace to match what he did a year ago. And he also missed some time as well, only playing 129 games. But the average on base and slugging are all trending down from a year ago. Abbott ahead, one and two. Ground ball, and so far, Abbott has minimized the contact quality. I'm always kind of getting an idea of how we can attack the pitcher early in a game. Sometimes they're pitching really well, and you have to kind of adapt to that and right now I think Abbott's pitching well enough to where we've got to be a little extra patient on a day like this 
We're not hitting anything hard so far, so we're better off just trying to wait for our pitch. And we get one there for a single. Lars Newtbar, a 279 average. 12 home runs on the year. About on pace for 30 like he had a year ago. Standings are down below. We're two and a half up on Cincinnati. And still not a huge gap between first and last place. Newt Barr out to right field. Hit well and run down. Stuart Fairchild showing the range to take away a potential extra base hit. Hens had to throw 39 pitches in the first two innings. I'm hoping here against the eight and nine batters we can have quicker at bats. Max Stassi lines out in center. By him, there's a swinging strike at 97. And he throws a pretty good slider, but they're still fighting him off, forcing more pitches. Hence, takes care of this one. Mason Wynn going to show off the cannon from short. One, two, three inning. And now he hits with a 307 average and got one up. That's a pitch you jump all over, but it's been tough to leave the infield. And Chris Rotondo is playing as well. I don't think he's had any at-bats since the start we gave him last episode. Rotondo has only 12 at-bats on the season. He gets an elevated curve and is underneath it. Abbott getting away with some misses. The fastball might be his best swing and miss pitch today. All right, maybe we'll change up the approach, especially with two strikes. Nice pitch. He got him on the big breaking ball. That was a nasty pitch and a tough at bat for the hitter to really do anything. That's off to right center. Another 2-0 pitch is hit pretty well. And hustling his way to second is Spencer Steer. One thing I'm also keeping an eye on with pitchers that are still developing is when we need to look at shutting the day down. Like at what pitch count do we think they're still like at their best versus slipping fly ball rotondo there and left. With Tink Hens so far, I'm kind of in that like 70 to 80 pitch range where I'm starting to think, all right, this is probably where you're done for the day as far as being at your best. Falling behind Cedric Mullins now, a 3-0 count. Hence walks his first batter of the day. Good fastball on the corner as Hens gets ahead of Jamer Candelario. And struck him out looking. The command's been there. I'm impressed with it, especially with this fastball. I feel like we're getting decent pitches. That's not like a great pitch to hit or anything, but way too many, like one or two pitch at bats. Abbott has only thrown 31 and he's about to get through the fourth inning. Some of his pitches are deceivingly hittable and then we just can't do anything putting it in play. That might get through though. A two out single for Contreras. And now Jordan Walker hitting with two down. Falling behind. Got one there and just a piece. 
And a chopper over the mound, and the play made at second base. A lot of ground balls for Andrew Abbott, and we are scoreless through four. Like to have that one as Hentz is behind Andy Abanez right now. I'm thinking this is a five inning day for Hentz. Energy starting to go down, facing the bottom of this Reds order. And it's a tie game. Arenado goes down to get it, makes the throw. Still has one year under contract, and it looks like we're getting a pretty good version of Arenado for basically the entire deal. Stassi hits one hard. That was the fastball. He's on. Are they running with Stassi? Are you kidding me? They call the hit and run there. And Walker lays out. And Hans is, oh, he can't find the bag. I have not seen that before in the show. Great play by Jordan Walker. Hans could have made the play, but he just couldn't locate first base. Maybe that'll come with experience, but that is a mistake, not an error. But that was a good chance to end the inning. And a waste of a great play by Walker, honestly. Now a fly ball off to right field. Long run, too far for Newt Barr. And our run is gonna come around. For T.J. Friedel, it's a double, and the Reds strike first. 81 pitches in for Tank Hentz, and I think that is going to do it for the day. Didn't have bad stuff at all, but we had too many long at-bats, too many long innings. He threw 80 pitches, and only seven had swings and misses. And the off-speed only accounted for four of those. They fouled off 19 pitches. That's just tough. Harvey, no, couldn't make the play, and neither can Tommy. And it's a 2-0 ball game. Both runs will be charged to Hentz. Runner takes off, and in there. Reds might not be done here in the fifth. And to first base goes Spencer Steer. Right field, Newt Barr ends it. A good frame for the Reds. And now we've got to get our offense going as well. Two hits on the night for St. Louis. Lars Newt Barr hitting with one gone. That's a good sweeping curve outside. And we're through that one. Early on that. One and two. Couldn't lay off. Four strikeouts for Abbott. Just a bit late on that fastball. And Abbott is through five, and he's been nearly flawless. We're going to bring in Jojo Romero with a 28% strikeout rate. We may need someone to go multiple innings in this game. Jojo might be our guy for that. That sounded good. Mullins to deep center. Scott is there to make the catch. If anyone else on this roster is playing center instead, that's a double. Perfect pitch to Candelario. Romero 0-2. And a weak one to Walker. Bottom of the sixth. And Chris Rotondo leads off. And Rotondo's ahead 3-1. Energy starting to get down for Abbott. 3-1. 
under the fastball and popped up behind short. I think he's starting to lose his command here. This is a chance here in the sixth. I want to take that chance with Victor Scott. That's caught. Bunt didn't work that time. And then we get Tommy Edmond. Behind him is Arenado. And now it's full. Got him. Really didn't want to swing there. And Abbott gets out of the sixth. We still don't have any offense. Pitching to Max Stassi. The 2-2 cutter is fought off. These guys just refuse to strike out. There we go, finally. Getting ahead of Fairchild now, and that could bloop in. Tommy can't make the catch. We'll make a move here with Michael Kopech, who's just been outstanding this season. His numbers are great. Basically a 200 batting average against 26% strikeout rates. That was worth a shot in the Rule 5. Runner takes off, and Contreras doesn't get the best throw. So another stolen base. But then comes back with the changeup to get strike three. Not a great pitch, but we'll take what we can get. Walker is there. He's played some good defense tonight. I think we need our star to jumpstart things. Bottom of the seventh is as good a time as any. I think this could be Abbott's last inning. He's across 70 now and misses up and in. Grounder, it's through. How did Arenado turn that into a single? It's something. But the rest is going to have to come against the bullpen. Abbott is going to exit. He had a really good game. Here is Tanner Rainey. He strikes out a lot of guys, but also gives up a lot of hits. 5.26 ERA. Rainey's hitting 3.05 against him. And here's Contreras. Whoa! Had to dodge that fastball. Just a piece of it there for a strike. Otherwise, would have been 3-0. and And now a full count. What do we get here from Rainey? Ball four. And we've got our best threat of the night. Jordan Walker. We'll let him have that one. It's a low fastball. We're looking for something to drive. Wow, that is strike two. I usually swing at that pitch, man. Fly ball, deep right field. A long run and caught. No advance from Nolan. Gorman now will try to get us on the board. Strike one. Finally got one elevated, and he blew it by me. And now Gorman launches! Deep left center! And gone! A go-ahead three-run blast puts the Cardinals in front. 16 homers on the season. And this rally was started by Nolan Arenado's base hit. We just had to get a little something for this to get going. That's one of those homers where I was a little surprised when we got the no doubt camera and everything. Graham Ashcraft will enter. Rainey was not the answer. 
Oh, that was a middle, middle slider. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was a great swing because I knew I was just late. I didn't hit it perfectly. But I'll take a 430 foot. Go ahead, Homer. Newt Bar, base hit. How about Mason Wynn? I thought of him as more of a lefty masher, but the numbers say the opposite. 369 against righties. But we still don't have a sample size for you to take a whole lot away from that. He's barely crossed 100 at-bats this year. And pounds it to short. That ends the seventh. Michael Kopech, that's what he's doing this year. Relievers are guys you just have to give more chances to. You never know when they're going to break out. You can end up getting a guy in the Rule 5, and he'll put together an all-star season if you're patient. It can happen. You could also revert back into a, a bad reliever once you pay him. You know, that's the fun of playing reliever roulette. I recommend short-term contracts, no more than two years, unless they are like a top 10% reliever. A drive to center! And Jonathan India puts the Reds back in front! Back and forth we go! Our lead was short-lived. Cincinnati takes the lead. He couldn't wait for my Michael Kopech praise to end. Stop laughing at me. It's not that funny. So we trail by one. That's hit well by Mullins. Really got behind it. Rotondo makes the catch. Can't get a strike against Candelario. And there's a good pitch. A walk. And the Reds looking to do more damage in the eighth. The batter is Andy Abanez, two and two. That's gonna drop in right field. And wanting third, Newt Bar will throw him out. Let's get out of here and try to get that run back. The catcher, Stassi. He's actually been kind of tough tonight for a guy hitting 180. And that only continues. He has a two-hit night. 12 hits now for Cincinnati. Friedel's got those weird splits. I'm going Helsley here. I'm putting in Ryan Helsley to try to keep this a one-run game. And hopefully give him the ninth as well with a lead. 102, ahead of Fairchild. All right, that's way too high. Three and two. We're gonna challenge him. Popped up. Why was this inning so difficult? Took three pitchers, man. So Jonathan India put Cincinnati in front, and we'll see if we've got any magic left. I don't want to face Alexis Diaz. I'd prefer to get this run in the eighth inning. Chris Rotondo. He sends it out to right, hits softly, out number one. A new pitcher. And Victor Scott will face JT. Chagua. Getting him on would be massive right now. But that's flipped to left field. Down the line. Caught on one pitch. So we got Tommy Edmond now with Nolan behind him. An 0 for 3 night. And Edmond turns on! And bless this one for a tie game! 
Tommy Edmond makes it four to four. Let's go. And that's 11 on the season. Both homers have come on elevated sliders. This is getting fun. These two teams fighting for first place. This is awesome baseball right now. And then it's Nolan Arenado. Now a tie ball game. Two gone and a foul back. No! I've been too aggressive with Nolan all game. But Tommy Edmond got us what we needed. And now we hope to keep it tied going bottom of the ninth. Ryan Helsley's in. Usually asked to save a game. Here we just want him to keep it tied. Friedel. This team is so annoying. They could look to bunt here and do it is a foul. And a foul on the second try. You can't show me that or I'm going to throw you a, the worst pitch to bunt possible. Got him! Runner goes and that's a good throw. He's out. Contreras nails him. And now two gone. Spencer Steer popped up. We're going bottom nine. And we're trying to walk things off. Contreras, Walker, Gorman. Can one of these three end this game? Chagua will stay out there. All three of these guys have power. Here we go. Big swing and miss. Diaz still getting warm. Little surprised we're not seeing him here, but if this goes to extra innings, I imagine we will. Good pitch. If Contreras were to reach, we likely end up running for him. Two and two. Lip foul. And a three, two count. I think we're going to see a new pitcher after this at bat. Three and two. Got him! Got the slider right in the perfect spot. Jordan Walker now. No pitching change. Wow, that was right there. And a ground ball to short. Thought we had our third slider to mash out of here. And Nolan Gorman had the three-run shot earlier. And now he's the one who looks to end things. Two for three on the night. No way! No way! Gorman fouls back a slider. That was a power swing. It was up. Come on. See if he gives us another slider here. Fly ball. Deep left. It's got carry, but it's caught. And we go to extras. What a game, guys. Jonathan India leads off. Helsley will remain in the game. Can we keep that runner at second? Good speed there. When we go to the bottom half, we'll likely run for Gorman. Helsley, two and two. And that's too far in. That's in shallow right. Newt Barr has to travel a ways, but makes the catch. And that's the key to these 10th innings. Get out number one with that runner staying put. And now we have the option here if we want to make a move. Hard to take a guy like Helsley out, but he's thrown 22 pitches. We don't have him on this team because of what he does after he's thrown 20. 
We're putting in Liberator. Now Mullins has swung the bat well. I know he's 0 for 3, but he's hit the ball hard. He's hit the ball far. And now he sends it to right field. He does it again over Newt Barr's head, and the Reds will take the lead. 5-4 Cincinnati. Another lead change. I still feel like the pitching change there was probably the right idea. Come on. I need a strike here. Jeez, what is this zone, man? A walk and now a Banez. Not a ton of arms left for us to use. We got to get a mound visit in here. Confidence is down on Liberator. Six balls, three strikes. Grounder. Arenado will tag the runner. That's all we get on that play. Was that the best play we could have made there? Uh, we might have been able to get that double play. 52 speed out of the box. Probably can make that. So now the catcher, Stassi. Why is the zone getting tighter? Got him. A strikeout. The Reds get one. And now it's our turn. Alexis Diaz will pitch. 21 to 23 on saves. Lane Thomas will run for Nolan Gorman. Lars Newtbar hits. He might be our best chance in this inning to make something happen. Here we go. And he sends it out to center on the very first pitch. And Thomas is going to move from second to third. Now Mason Wynn needs to tie the game. No, I'm not like the CPU. I'm not calling the squeeze play. Maybe ever. Oh my! Come on! Keep it fair! Mason Wynn! No! I can't believe they just did that to me. Three and one. I think pitching around him here is the right idea. You're okay walking him and getting a double play in effect. And it is a walk. Do you leave Rotondo in? Chris Rotondo, the rookie, has 15 career at-bats. None with the level of pressure he's seeing now. We're going to bring in Donovan here. Kind of an easy call. Brendan Donovan comes off the bench. We need something preferably in the air. We do have the option of running here to break up that double play. I won't do it on the first pitch. I'm not sure what he's going to do here. Okay, pitch out. But I think we should try to steal second base. He goes. It's a fly ball. Hit well to left. And that is gone. Brendan Donovan. Walk off homer. Oh, my God. A bow shot like that off of Alexis Diaz. I think we've all just seen the game of the series. What a finish. It just doesn't get much better than that, guys. Brendan Donovan off the bench delivers a pinch hit homer. You saw the trophies come in. That's my first pinch hit homer in this game. My first walk-off home run in MLB 24. What a win to beat our rivals in Cincinnati. We had to come back three separate times. Will you leave a like for that? 
Subscribe for more Cardinals franchise. That was one of the most fun games I've had in a long time. A pitcher's duel for a while. And then Cincinnati woke up and we were able to answer three different times. Had to use almost every pitcher on the roster. In the bullpen anyway. They had double our hits, but we made ours count more. I never know what an episode is going to bring to the table, but every now and then we get one of these where we get the best moments of the series. And this is what makes Franchise so incredible. That is going to do it for today's episode, everybody. We'll continue very soon with the Cardinals franchise again. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoyed the walk-off win, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.